All right, welcome back. And it's time for us to get into our guest segment this morning. And our conversation on this show is going to be centered around non-governmental organizations and government policies. And of course, joining me is the program coordinator, Keep Hope Alive Nigeria Regenesis Initiative. Now, this organization conducts quality trainings and certifications. They provide tools for artisans, industry and work placements and also work portals as well. They cut across um, unemployed youths, but they also currently focus on construction workers such as plumbers, electricians, carpenters, welders, tilers and painters. I've got the program coordinator, Oluwa Dolapo Ojo. Good morning. Good morning, Richard. It's Good great morning. to have you here. It's fantastic. Hope it wasn't here. so hard to find your way to this place. Oh no, it wasn't hard. Um, um, yeah, just the construction on this road. Uh, that will be over very soon. Yes, so you're wait. welcome <laughs> again. Thank you. Thank right. You so just you know, as a background, I'd like for you to just shed light on what non-profit or non-governmental organizations are all about. Okay. You know, why are they really set up in the first place? Mm-hmm. Maybe you can help us by giving us like a general historical understanding of the need for that kind of structure as a vehicle for employment and uh, growth. Okay. in a country. All right, so um, non-governmental organizations, they are basically set up as, it could be as a person's passion. Like, I could decide today to set up an NGO because I see that something is going wrong and I want to make it right. Mm-hmm. So that's the, the basic reason why people set up NGOs. There are many other reasons why people do, but then the one legit one that I yes. know is following your passion mm-hmm. and wanting to make things right in a society. Yeah, like someone can just wake up to the and say, you know what, I've been in this country for 10 years and I've not right. had a job, so why right. not <laughs> just get an NGO started, right. you know, but that would be a wrong reason to start an NGO, right? Well, I don't know. It shouldn't be. It's not a wrong reason. Well, if you're looking at making income from an NGO, mm. then you're doing it the wrong way okay. because NGOs are supposed to be non-profits. Mm. So you're meant to be doing whatever you're doing for a good purpose that would serve humanity not yourself Mm. great amazing now before we get into your organization proper you've been a part of this team that have started an ngo from scratch so what kind of hindrances would you say that the establishment policies or establishment laws for ngos in nigeria come with Mm. uh you know perhaps it has to do with duration or in your experience what would you say is frustrating or is easy about setting up an ngo in nigeria number one (laughs) I'm sure we all know the major challenge that everyone has is money. Mm. To have an NGO and to carry out projects, you need money. You can't do anything for free. Right. Like, okay, so we have NGOs that want to teach people on certain skills, just like how can goes into vocational skills, teaching people on long-term skills that they can actually make money from. We have to pay certain people to get the job done. So, mm-hmm. yes, number one challenge is always money. Um, I would say the good thing or the easy thing about having an NGO would be when you have a good team. People who are in it with you and mm-hmm. have the same passion, have the same drive as why you set up that NGO. That, that would, that's it. Uh, something easy about having an NGO, having a good team to work with. Mm. Yes. Great. So l- let's focus on CAN now. Um, CAN conducts trainings and certifications periodically. Mm-hmm. How has it been for you so far, for CAN so far, with all of the trainings and certifications? Okay, so let me just take us back to how CAN was set up and why it was set up. So some years back, we had a group of career-oriented, intelligent women Mm. who came together for an informal outing, like just over coffee. And they had a lot to say about um, how things are going wrong, like... Education is bad. Mm. Um, the vocational sector is not constructed. Uh, employment rate is low. So many things were going wrong. And so they just thought about it that, okay, well, let's try and make things right. See, we, there are things that we can do. We don't have to have all the money in the world. But hopefully, when we start something, money will come and we'll be able to make a change. Mm-hmm. We don't just want to be participants to the change of Nigeria. We want to be thought leaders and change makers. So let's do something that can make a change. So they decided that they would go into training people in the construction industry. And the construction industry, because they noticed that it is a 
high economic activity industry. Mm. It brings in money. If you see all those builders on the road, mm. all those electricians, they are not they are not broker. <laughs> <laughs> they have money. They are cashing out slowly, they are like undercover, out on right? The low. So they decided that they are going to be training people in that sector, construction. And so far, so good. It's been wonderful. Mm. Um, we have managed to train a couple of people on different areas that have to do with health and safety, um, heat and ventilation and air conditioning. And in different ways, we have tried to just try out different things. But then we find out that it was that it is important to not just train people on short term things. Mm. I mean, um, there's a saying that you don't when you give a person a fish, you feed him for a day. Mm-hmm. But when you give a, when you teach the person how to fish, you feed him for his lifetime. Yeah. So we look more into long term trainings, and so far it's been wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's been wonderful. Thank Great, God. it's amazing stuff. And you talked about funding, uh, mm-hmm. how it's one of the you know drawbacks mm-hmm. when it comes to setting up an NGO. So let's talk mm-hmm. about funding and investments now, and partnerships now. Partnerships. Yeah, organizations that give grants to NGOs have detailed qualifications or detailed mm-hmm. requirements before mm-hmm. they can give out these grants, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And NGOs must meet the checklist. Yes. And most NGOs find that they have to keep thorough internal processes and documents mm-hmm. in order for them to qualify for these grants. Right. You know, it's more mm-hmm. like self-regulating themselves, yes. you know, to be good enough when mm-hmm. the opportunity strikes. Yes. You know, so how has it been for can when it comes to getting funding and partnerships and and how has your organization managed the situation? Okay, so we thank God for can. Right from the start it's all been good. Um so we have obviously cha- um, the challenge is always money, 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 money. We mm-hmm. need money. We need funding. We need because we can't do everything ourselves. True. Even the government, they can't do everything themselves. That's, that's why, why we have NGOs, <laughs> that's right? That's exactly why we have NGOs. So we look out for partnerships. We we look out for companies or agencies that have similar goals to what we have mm-hmm. and carry out the projects that we have in place. For example, we we did a, a Heat, heat ventilation and air conditioning training mm-hmm. last year, and we partnered with Cool Plus Limited. They are one of the top cooling system or um, companies in Lagos, and also Cranium Engineering. We just came together. Mm. Can's duty was administration. They put down the money mm-hmm. <laughs> and the venue and everything else. Like it was, it was wonderful. And for funding, we have been very lucky to have very generous members of can we have the board of trustees we have the members and staff so we have very generous members of can who have who always support the dream mm. i mean they've always been there when we have a project we have to execute we need to the source for amount of money they deliver mm-hmm. thank god but we are looking for opportunities where we would have that one big hit yes. that would give us that amount of money which we need yes I'm sure we'll talk about the plans that we have for the year. True. I mean, the question is still ongoing. Yeah. So, um, for now, we're just looking out for opportunities, sponsorships, donations, partnerships, grants, so that we can keep the organization running. That's how organizations run. Yeah, it just brings me back to what you said initially about why an NGO should be set up. I mean, you need to be passionate about... About what you're doing. Yes, because without passion, by the time you spend so much money into, you know, empowering (laughs) other people (laughs) and the passion is not there, trust me, you have to stop, stop, you know, along the way. And you mentioned also that, you know, can was brought about was birthed by women, Mm -hmm. educated women, Mm -hmm. passionate women, dogged women who were you know, wanted to make a change. And this brings me to the International Women's Day coming up in just a few days. And yeah, (laughs) part of your focus is providing high class training and empowerment, especially to the girl population. Mm -hmm. In fact, according to uh, a a recent MBS um, statistics just released, there are 12.2 million unemployed females. Mm -hmm. And that's against 9.5 million unemployed males. So we can see the the disparity, the the difference is, you know, very significant. So in in, in light of this, how is your NGO particular about women? And how do you intend to translate this into International Women's Day? Okay, so... um, can regenesis 
Isn't that a beautiful name? It is. <laughs> like, the Genesis. <laughs> Keep Hope Alive Nigeria Regenesis Initiative. Mm. Beautiful name. Okay, so about um, integrating women. I know we do construction. That's what we are. That's the, those are the trainings that we do. Mm-hmm. Anything construction. And like I said before, when you see those electricians on the road, those don't think they are poor. Don't think they are broke. Oh. <laughs> they have money. Hmm. So we are looking at having um, a virtual program on March 10th mm. that's going to bring in um, women that are already in the construction industry. We have female plumbers, female electricians, female civil engineers, female painters. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful. Like people don't know about these things, and because the construction industry seems to be male-dominated, we want to change that narrative. We want to change that mindset. So that women are very meticulous and they can do these things. So let's bring them into the system. So on March 10th, we're going to be bringing in those people that will be sharing their experiences, telling us how the construction industry has been for them so far and giving people information on how they can join because many people are out there they don't know how to go about things. yes there are these opportunities are there but that they, they are not aware no about so we're going to be t- teaching people on how they can join the construction industry and because we are an ngo we don't want to put any major cost on anybody's head mm. so we will not tell you to bring one million naira to come and learn how to be a carpenter no. yes we are going to source for funds by god's grace we will get all that money mm. so that we can source we can we can train people on those certain skills and you see that at the end of the day the employment rate is going to increase if all these ngos come together and say okay let's train these people let's make sure that a percentage of them have knowledge and the skill to push things we'll see that everything is going to turn out fine at the end of the day mm-hmm. and um <coughs> in the past we have done a couple of projects and we integrated women into it we we are because it's a women-led organization we don't just want to focus on women mm. we also look at gender equality and all yes. those things. it has to be a balance mm-hmm. so we we are all out to having women on board they need to be informed and march 10th is the day and we're going to be there'll be a link on our social media pages so that people can register for this program. It's going to be a very fun and enlightening one. Mm-hmm. Imagine. I can't wait personally. Wow. Wait. Amazing <laughs> stuff. Uh, you will have to drop us that link, but just yes, we'll wrap up the conversation now. Uh this is just what, you know, the International Women's Day is about. Right. Having mm-hmm. women Empowered. in male dominated, you know, career paths. Uh, and it's very challenging when you see a few women, you know, mm-hmm. having to struggle in an industry where men dominate. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that's where the outcry for equality yes. and for or the need to look at skills and competence mm-hmm. instead of just you know listening to the loudest yeah. voice in the yeah. room. And so yeah. And before anybody says that dollar for that is talking, does she have any? I am a glass engineer. And you I see, am like this. <laughs> there's no glass I cannot fix. Dollar for cannot be screens, plate glass. There are different um, different equipment that I use to fix different type of glass. I'm very knowledgeable. I can even train people wow. on it. <laughs> dollar for so. Yeah, women are strong. Which women one can I do now? Uh, Which one are you going to put me through? There are plenty. In the Maybe field. I should try painting. Painting. I'll just think yeah. about. See, mm. there are so many things to learn. Just imagine you constructing. This table was made by a carpenter. You know, and look how beautiful it is and useful. Mm. That's why. Pe- that's why these construction workers actually charge high because they know the value of what they do. So I that's why we want to something. bring women in. I'll bring think of in. something, and I'll, I'm I'm not going to share this meat and not have a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to get involved as Definitely. well. Now, I mean, this is not just the only thing or event we are looking forward to uh, mm-hmm. with Can. Yes. Uh, let us in a bit on your organization's future projects. What should we expect? Okay, by the grace of God, before the end of this year, we should have trained people on heat ventilation and air conditioning. Mm. We want people to be more aware about HVAC. It's important. And we also are looking into training people on electrical works, plumbing, and tiling. Let me share something with you. Mm-hmm. I went to a community some days back, some weeks back, somewhere around Aja, inside, inside Aja. I just went to have a conversation with the ballet of the community. Mm. And he brought in his secretary and we had a meeting. You will be surprised. He told me that 
he has a construction site and on that construction site there is not one Nigerian construction worker. Can you imagine? He actually pays somebody to go and bring construction workers from Kotonu. Just imagine. I was hoping to hear from the US or from hey, Germany or, it was, or yeah, it to be good. Come from on, Kotonu, all come these on. neighboring countries. They go and bring in guys. What's Don't we have good enough skilled here? people in Nigeria? in Nigeria? But then the problem is you would see that these people want to learn. They want to know how to do these things. But mm. you can't just enter a construction site and start learning. You have to go through some training. Mm. But then they can't afford these trainings. Which brings us back to soliciting for funds to train people. There are people out there that that want to learn, but they don't know how to go about it. Mm-hmm. So that's why Khan is here. We are here to bridge the gap between people that want to learn and people that have the money to give. Mm-hmm. So if you have the money to give, contact us. You know, so there'll be an equalizing. Exactly. Right. It's been an amazing time with you, Dollar Paul. But before I let you go, please drop us those links or those where can we go to want to get across to Khan and be a part of all these opportunities. Where can we find you? Great. So on our website is www.can.com.ng. On Instagram, very simple, Can Regenesis. On Facebook, Can Regenesis. On Twitter, Can Regenesis. <laughs> and if you want to reach out to our office line, 0817-715-3993. If you want to reach us via email, info at can.com.ng. We're very easy to reach out to. Once again, that number is 0817-715-3993. Amazing stuff, Don Apo. It's been a great time with you on the show. Fantastic. Can re Genesis. Yes. I'm not going to let that get out of my head. Yes, please. So, yeah, I've been talking with Oluwa Dolapo Ojo. She's a program coordinator. Keep Hope Alive Nigeria Regenesis Initiative. These guys are a non-profit, non-governmental organization that conducts quality trainings and certifications. They provide tools for artisans, industry and work placements and work portals as well. And these cut across unemployed youths, but they currently focus on construction workers such as plumbers, electricians, Carpenters, welders, tilers, and painters. Thank you once again, Dolapo, for Thank joining you, me Rachel, on the show this morning. Dolapo.